Hello, welcome to Plus Reports, where we bring you some of the stories and events that made the news recently. And in case you missed out on some of them, don't worry, we've got you covered in this edition. I'm Jacinta Ubiuku. Six million five hundred and seventy thousand two hundred and ninety-one registered voters in the state collecting their PVCs. That is one million thirty-eight thousand nine hundred and two voters. The highest for any state did not collect PVCs in Lagos State. Now, ahead of 2023 general elections, a chief ten of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Bode George, has called on INEC party leaders and managers to educate the people on the importance of the permanent voters card, PVC, and the need for the electorate to participate in elections. 72.7 million collected their permanent voters card before the 2019 general elections, according to the nation's electoral body. This represents 86.3% of the over 84 million registered voters in the country. According to INEC, the percentage of the registered voters as at March 2019 stands at 49.78%. In a chat with a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party body judge, he said INEC and all concerned parties need to take voter education seriously if the next election will be anything to reckon with. There must be a deliberate effort to inform the people, to educate the people. The town criers must go out explaining to them, send those town hall meetings, let them explain to them, let them even show them the importance of the PVC. What does he do? How does he work in the various Nigerian languages? Voter turnout at the last election seems worrisome at 34.75%. On the streets, a cross-section of Nigerians shared their ideas on how to eradicate voter apathy. I think the government should sensitize the youth more on platforms that are known by the youth. For example, Meta, that's um, the new name for WhatsApp, and uh, most betting sites, so they should run adverts there because that's where youths go to involve the youth. I feel to get people come out to vote, the voting process should be kind of flexible. You know, we as Nigerians, we, we, we play a lot, we are always excited. I mean, because the, the voting process most times is rigid, rigorous, and a lot of people can't stand the stress. So when they see something that is exciting, maybe like something like a side attraction that can actually uh, excite someone or someone should come to, to actually come out to vote. They challenged INEC to do thorough checks and balances and its oppressions. Some of the PVCs that were not utilized, that were not collected, why? You know, those are the things I believe Prof and his team must go and be, uh, and ensure that all is well. Um, I know there's no system that is 100% perfect, but we won 99.999%. Perhaps the coming governorship elections in Oshun and Ekiti State, come June and July, will stand as a litmus test for the conduct of the 2023 general elections by INEC. The thrust here is that nobody should make you think or believe your vote does not count. Please get registered, make effort to collect your PVCs and come out to vote when it's time. Lagos State Governor Babadze Songo Lu has promised to empower the wives of army officers at 9th Brigade uh, Garrison Contentment Ikeja. Does not count. To acquisition. He also spoke about adding infrastructures to schools and the barracks. He made his commitment to uh, the West Africa Social Activities to mark the end of troops training 2021. Destiny Momo was there. It was an evening to unwind as culture, talents, thug of war, and other activities were on display. Governor Sonwolu, who appreciated the officers and men for the effort in securing the nation's integrity, pledged his commitment to empowering wives of the officers. I want to publicly acknowledge and thank the officers 
and men of the Nigerian Army for the great work you are doing for our country, for the great work you are doing to keep the security and the sanctity of our nation, the great work you are doing with other security operatives in Lagos State in particular. I do not have a better opportunity than now to thank each and every one of you. But today, and so we will work together and our ministry will come and identify what kind of empowerment, what kind of skills can we come and bring to you that can help you, that can ensure that you can also be a source of support to your spouse, your husband, while they're serving the nation. We'll also come around and see if there's any support we can give to your school in terms of um, infrastructure or in terms of internet facility or in terms of um, computers, just so that we can help you know, the children that are going to the schools in these barracks and they can turn to become great citizens tomorrow. Garrison Commander Lieutenant Colonel Tahir Abdallah, who was overjoyed at the turn of events, congratulated the troops for the end of a successful training in 2021. He also thanked the governor for the donations made by the state over time. As you know, Nigeria Army is deployed in various theaters of operation across the country, and we have had tremendous successes. We are indeed grateful. Your Excellency. Let me also thank the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, the General Officer Commanding 81 Division, Major General L.A. Fejeku, for the tremendous support and guidance throughout the year. Prizes were given to winners of various tugs of war competitions. As the West African social activity celebrations comes to an end, the Nigerian Army starts a week-long celebration of the Armed Forces Remembrance Day with Christian and Muslim prayers. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. On crude oil theft, 22 suspected crude oil thieves have been arrested by operatives of the Nigerian Navy along the Akasa River in the Brass local government area of Bayosa State. The suspects and the vessel used in the perpetrator and the crime have been handed over to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for prosecution. Our correspondent in Bayosa State, Jesse C. covered the handing over. MTT4 was intercepted on December 6, 2021 with 15 crew members on board for allegedly transporting about 700,000 liters of stolen crude. Investigation by operatives of Nigerian Navy ship NNSRO led to the arrest of seven other collaborators. The Navy is not empowered to prosecute. This is a handover ceremony. We have established the fact that the vessel and her crew are complicit in crime that border on economic sabotage. As a result of that, we are here today to officially hand over the vessel and her crew to the Economic and Financial Crime Commission. We will be signing the handing over and taking over notes the EFCC promises to do a thorough job in its investigation of the crime. On behalf of my Zona commander, I hereby take over MTTIS4 and the crew member. After this official taking over, EFCC will now commence its action of investigation. And after the investigation, the need will be done in accordance to the law. The interception of the fuel vessel on the sea looked to be a major breakthrough for the Navy in 2021 as securing the nation's waterways and the resources therein still remains its core duty. Jesse AC for Plus TV Africa. It's now time for a short break. We'll be right back with more. <laughs> 